say that edge is an area of much discussion is perhaps an understatement, yet discuss it we must as the technology choices and strategies facing telcos can be rather perplexing. Beth, Verizon is one of the more progressive telcos. Um, how did Verizon approach this new world frontier of the network edge? Well, we didn't call it the edge. Mm. <laughs> uh, so uh, we established a strategy of software-defined networking, uh, literally two, about two and a half years ago. Um, and two years ago, I, or, or so, I was sitting in a room with a bunch of people and was given a mandate of creating a new product that incorporates the software-defined networking strategy using some of our existing resources that we were building out. Uh, that were based on software-defined networking. Uh, so edge computing was not even a concept we were really thinking about, but we also understood that our customers needed to, you know, we needed to deliver services out to our customers' remote sites. So um, when I presented uh, that, that concept and, and what we were doing at the Boston Conference at the OpenStack Summit last year, uh, it was a revelation to, to the entire uh, summit, oh wow, that's a really interesting idea uh, to take, you know, what you've been doing in, uh, you know, in inside a data center and spreading it out to thousands or hundreds of thousands of nodes that are remote. <laughs> so this is where OpenStack plays with the edge. Then is the whole concept of the edge is a, like a, a data center cloud architecture. So I like to think of it as that the data center is the subset of the edge superset. So the data center is one type of use case where the, you know, the, the cloud is within a data center, highly controlled, uh, you know, you have top of rack switches, you have very, very fast networks where the edge can be you know, it can be a satellite connection, it could be, you know, a tiny little IoT device, it could be a cell phone, it could be a box, it could be six boxes, it could be a rack. Um, it, it's, it's a superset. <laughs> so, is, is there um, an optimal approach for, for telcos and other telcos looking to um, exploit or take advantage of, of these opportunities at the network edge? Or, or is it still up for debate as to the, the best way to go? I would definitely say it's still up to debate uh, and, and it's really dependent upon the use case. So okay. I've been spending the last year or so working the OpenStack um, working committee on edge computing, focusing on developing those use cases and really helping define what is edge. Um, I can't tell you how many People have asked me that at this conference. Uh, and, and what are the commonalities between those use cases? And what are the differences? And, and more importantly, what are the gaps and the tools that are existing within OpenStack and within the broader uh, open source community? Because we, do, we realize it's not just OpenStack. It really has to, we have to really bring in the larger open source community. We're involved with LNF, uh, sorry, LFN. Um, the Linux Foundation Networking Initiative through o ONAP um, and uh, ONS and other types of initiatives that relate to edge computing. So it's a combination. <laughs> so you, you mentioned a few of those there and, and there's also the new um, Acrano um, Edge um, project. Um, is it still difficult getting all these different groups to coordinate or, or bring their learnings together? You're herding cats here. <laughs> so, of course, it's difficult. But I, I think there's a common interest in solving the problem. Uh, so the edge use case is very strong. The, it's not only a business case, but it's a technology case. It's very strong for the telcos. Um, however, following behind the telco use case, uh, there's a lot of other use cases that are dependent upon that telco infrastructure. So that Internet of Things use case, the, the smart cities use case, the utilities, all of the, the mo drones, uh, mobile telemetry, these are all following on the work that the telcos are developing with, it, with that shared infrastructure. And as we look to incorporate a lot of open source projects, um, 
how resilient and, and reliable are, are some of these, these projects and the technologies and software that, that, that come out? Because they seem to be developed and iterated at a very fast pace. That's, I mean, it, yes, it's fast. Um, however, we're building on years and years of open source. Uh, open source is, is a concept that's been around for 30 years at this point. And so uh, it's been proven over and over again to produce extremely reliable code. So I would say that open source in many ways is actually more reliable than proprietary code. <laughs> Finally, um, for those smaller telcos that you know, don't have the resources to experiment or, or innovate um, internally, that look to others, look to the, the leaders in, in the marketplace, what, what's your advice for how, how they should, should go, up, go about their, their strategies? Are, are we still in a look-see phase, or should they, should they step in and try and contribute to a number of these, these projects and initiatives? I would love help in, in that, because I think that one of the key successes will be the, the, the need for, sta not, not necessarily standards, but mm. shared APIs, shared platforms, shared vision. Um, because you know telcos at the end of the day are networked, right? And and these types of, of you know edges is, is no less a network. Um, and so uh, for the smaller telcos, uh, you know <clears throat> maybe you don't want to roll out you know something as ambitious as what you know AT and T and Verizon are doing. Uh, but there's still plenty of edge opportunities um, to get going. Um, and do watch out for the operations because that's. That's going to be your downfall. <laughs> you know, get that right. <laughs> Beth, thanks for the advice. For now, thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. Thank you.